Now let's see how this problem can be solved using the uh, financial calculator application here. Yeah? Now the present value uh, was 1000. Okay. The payments, yeah, 20. Note that it must be negative 20. Yeah? Then future value is 0. Okay, because tw negative 20 is uh, the payment that you make, therefore it should be negative. Yeah? The annual rate is 1.5%. Okay, 1.5. The period is uh, what you want to solve for. Yeah? Now, this compounding must be annually. Yeah? Right? You have to change this annually because this must coincide with the annual rate here. Yeah? You provide this as annual rate, therefore this is annually. Yeah? But this is, of course, 1.5% per month. Yeah? Therefore, this also translates to months. Yeah? Alright, then you just click on this period and you get 93.11, yeah, which is the same answer, right? So this is how you use the financial calculator so to solve the same problem. Alright, let's go back to the slides. Let's look at another example here. Suppose you borrow 2000 at 5% and you are going to make annual payments of 734.42. Yeah? How long before you pay off the loan? Again, uh, a good starting point yeah, would be to identify the new elements in a problem. Okay, so here you know that you borrow $2,000, so this would be the present value, this is known. Then this 5% is the discount rate or the interest rate, okay. And you are going to make annual payments, okay, the payment is known, okay, this is also known, the third element is known. So the fourth element, yeah, which is not known, is the number of periods. How long do you need to pay off? Yeah, how, how many payments that you need to make yeah, to pay off the loan? Yeah, all right. So we can use the same formula. Okay, uh, let me just bring up the formula here. Okay, n is equals to natural log of one minus two thousand, the present value of n t divided by the payment. Okay, multiplied by the interest rate. Okay, 5%. All this divided by the natural log of 1 plus 5. Yeah, so you get an answer which is very close to 3. Yeah, okay, very close to 3. So it means that you need 3 years. Yeah, because it's annual payments, there will be 3 annual payments. Therefore, it will be 3 years. Yeah, now you can also use the table. Yeah, time value table. So you know that this is 2000. The present value of NVT is 2000 here. All right. Uh, let me just get the pointer here. Yeah? Okay, 2000 here. The payment is 734.42. This is also known. Multiplied by present value interest factor NVT, 5% and N years. Yeah, N is not known. So what you do is you get this value 2000 divided by 734.42. You get 2.7232. Yeah? Now what you need to do is you need to look for this value. Yeah, this value in the table. How do you use the table? Go to the column 5%. Yeah, the interest rate must be 5%. Look for this table, present value interest factor M80. I think this is table A3 yeah, in your textbook, yeah, in the appendix, table A3. Then look at the column for 5%. Then look down yeah, the row. Yeah. N is not known, but in that column 5%, start from uh, one period, yeah, one period and down. Look for this value, yeah, and you'll find that this value is when n is equals to three, yeah. When n is equals to three, the present value interest factor n with five percent and three, yeah, three years will be equals to two point seven two three two. Therefore, this yeah, can allow you to solve. Yeah, you can also use the table in this particular problem. Yeah, but as a as we have seen yeah, in other problems, you may not be able to use the table yeah, because not all interest rates are given in the table and not for all uh, periods, yeah, number of periods. You don't have a fraction of a uh, period and also you don't have fractions yeah, of the interest rate. Let's say 5.2% or 5.75%. Yeah, you don't find that in the table. Alright, let's move on. Okay, yeah, now we come to the last element in this present value uh, of annuity. Okay, uh, we know that there are four elements in an annuity problem. Yeah? Okay, which is the present value of annuity, the payment, 
the uh, number of periods or number of payment and the interest rate. But now we have uh, dedicated yeah, the other parts yeah, to determine the present value, the first first one. Then we have determined the payment for the second part. Yeah. Then the number of periods. Now we want to determine the interest rate yeah, when the interest rate is not known. Yeah. All the other elements are known, but you don't know the interest rate. Then you can solve for the interest rate. Okay, let's look at this example. Suppose you borrow $10,000 from your parents to buy a car. You agree to pay $207.58 per month for 60 months. What is the monthly interest rate? Yeah. So now let's uh, determine or identify the known elements. Yeah? Of course, the first one is this. So this is what you borrow. This is the present value yeah, of annuity. Why is it an annuity? Because you have to pay $207.58 per month for 60 months. So this is an annuity. So this is the present value of annuity. What you borrow now must be worth the same, equal to what you pay later, yeah, uh, in present value terms, yeah. Therefore, okay, this is the present value of annuity. That's the first element that is known. The second element is this: the payment, yeah, that you make, two hundred and seven dollars and fifty-eight cents. That is and per month, yeah. Know this, yeah. The payment is per month. That is the payment that is known. And N is also known yeah, for how long? For 60 months. Yeah? The number of payments will be 60. And this is months. Yeah? So it's consistent. Yeah? Now you need to know the interest rate, the monthly interest rate. What is the monthly interest rate? That's the unknown element. Yeah? Alright, so knowing the 3, you can solve for the 4. Yeah? Because these 4 must be in equilibrium. Yeah? If this is a given value, this is a given value, this is a given value then this must be a particular value. It cannot be any value. Yeah? It's not a variable because these three are determined, are fixed. Therefore, this must also be determined. Yeah? Alright, how do you solve this? Yeah? Is there a formula? Unfortunately, there is no formula for this. Yeah? There is no formula for this. For the others, yeah? to solve for present value of annuity, yes, there is a formula. For the payment, there was a formula. We have seen that before. For the number of payments or number of period, we also have seen the formula. Yeah? So, there are three formulas that we have seen, which is basically the same, but we uh, re-express this in terms of payment and re-express this in terms of the number of payments here yeah? uh, for the same formula. It's the same formula, the same one formula. But for interest rate, yeah? to solve for interest rate, we don't have a formula. Why? Because the interest rate yeah, in the present value NVT formula appears in the numerator as well as the denominator. Yeah? And in the numerator, it appears as uh, uh, raised to the power of n. Yeah? Therefore, it is difficult to solve deterministically. Yeah? There is no formula. Okay, So, to solve such prob problems, it is easier to use financial calculator or spreadsheet. So if there's no formula, okay, and you cannot solve it uh, manually, yeah, manually using a scientific calculator and just a formula, yeah. So it's a bit difficult to solve, yeah. Uh, there are some exceptions, okay, when the number of periods are very small, yeah. For example, let's say two periods or one period, not one period, two periods or three periods, yeah. Up to four periods, you can still solve, yeah, manually. But when there's more, for example, like sixty periods, yeah, sixty months, then it becomes. Uh, very uh, almost impossible. Yeah, I'm saying impossible to solve uh, with the formula. All right. Therefore, okay, we can uh, either use a financial calculator or a spreadsheet, yeah, which gives you the answer immediately. Yeah. Okay. So let's show this yeah, example in uh, the spreadsheet first. Now, yeah, here we are. So finding the rate. Yeah. So this is ten thousand. Okay. This uh, loan. And ten thousand dollars to buy the car, yeah. And you know that this is the payment that you make every month, two hundred and seven dollars and fifty-eight cents. Negative, yeah. Note the sign convention. Okay, it has to be negative. This is positive. This must be negative, yeah. That means a loan that you receive now, and you make the payment for the loan every month, yeah. And the period is sixty. You know that, and there is no future value zero, yeah. That means this payment that you make. Will go to fully pay off this loan, and there won't be any remainder. Yeah? Right. 
So uh, all the elements are there. Yeah? The first element is known, second element is known, and the third element is known. Yeah? So the fourth element is what you need to solve, the interest rate. Yeah? So to solve for the interest rate, uh, you need to use this function yeah? equal to rate R-A-T-E open bracket the first element must be the number of periods 60 yeah? which is here 60 then the second must be the payment negative 207.58 you can either key in the number or you can click on the cell that has that number yeah? then the present value which is 10,000 okay this is negative Okay, uh, for example here, this is negative, this must be positive, the present value must be positive. The future value is zero, type, yeah, now this type means you need to put zero, yeah, because this is an ordinary annuity, meaning the annuity payment occurs at the end of each month, each period, yeah, therefore it is zero. If it is uh, annuity due, meaning it will occur at the beginning of the period, at the beginning of each month, yeah. But here is the end, therefore it's zero. Now note this, yeah, there is a guess here. Yeah? Guess means you guess a rate for the uh, computer to try. Yeah? Actually, the computer uses trial and error method to solve for the interest rate. Yeah? Even the computer uses this algorithm. Yeah? Okay, so you can put zero, you can just leave it blank or put zero. Yeah? Okay, you guess zero as the rate first, and then the computer will work out the best rate. Okay, then you click OK, you get this answer, yeah? 0 0.7499, yeah? close to 0 0.75, that's the answer, yeah? using the spreadsheet. Now let's uh, see this example on uh, the financial calculator application. You have uh, this page here, time value of money calculator. Okay, now the present value, okay, the loan value is 10,000. Okay, 10,000. Payment, yeah. This payment is negative. Don't forget the negative. 207.58. Yeah, this is from the slides. Future value, there's no remainder after you pay, yeah. For 60 periods, this amount, this will go towards fully paying off the loan, yeah. Alright, this is the annual rate that you want to solve. This is the unknown. The period, yeah, is... Uh, uh, 60 yeah 60 periods yeah or 60 months leave this as annual yeah this must be annual if it's monthly changes to annual yeah usually this is the default monthly change it to annual annually yeah so this annually must be coinciding yeah that means it must agree with this annual rate yeah that's how you solve yeah all right so here this is what you want to determine so just click on the rate yeah all these three elements are known present value is known the payment is known and the period is known the unknown element is the annual rate yeah you just click on that and you get 0 0.75 yeah it means that 0 0.75 percent yeah it is rounded to two, uh, three decimal points uh if you want the exact value it will be 0 0.7449 yeah as we have seen in excel yeah so that's how you solve this problem using uh, the financial calculator application. Okay, let's go back to the slides now. All right, here we have seen how this problem can be solved uh, using a spreadsheet and also the financial calculator application. Yeah, let's move on. Now, if you want to uh, solve this using manual method, yeah, you can use you can also use annuity time value tables. Otherwise, you can also use uh, trial and error method, yeah? but this is tedious. Yeah? We'll look at that uh, next. Yeah? Here, we cannot use annuity time value tables because the uh, number of period, yeah? even though it's 60, the interest rate is actually very small, yeah? less than 1%, yeah? 0.75%. Therefore, here it will be difficult to use the time value table. Yeah? But I'll show you how this can be used in the next slide. Yeah? We can use the time value tables partially yeah? uh, as a first step before we use the trial and error method okay let's look at that now okay first try using the time value table yeah? okay so here this is the formula present value of annuity divided by the annuity payment yeah must be equal to using the formula yeah? it's just a modification of the formula that we've seen earlier yeah so it's 10,000 divided by this value.